Let the prodigals return. I see a mass wave, a tsunami wave of young and old people returning to the Father, running back to the cross. The house of God will be filled. And according to Isaiah chapter 2, the nations, the Gentiles, the Goyim, the heathens and the pagans are returning to the mountain of the Lord. I see many returning with eagerness, running, rushing towards the Father with open arms. Many are returning to the Father, the backslidden, the lukewarm, the religious, the cold, the hard-hearted, the stubborn, the ones that have been filled with malice and bitterness, unforgiveness and witchcraft, the souls. God is causing the souls of the day to return and to repent and to fully be reconciled to not only God, our Heavenly Father, but to the family of the Lord. The prodigals are returning in mass numbers in this season. Do you have a prodigal? Have you been a prodigal? Prodigal by definition means a reckless person that has foolishly spent money or an inheritance. We pray that the reckless love of God will destroy any recklessness of man. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 15, verse 17, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Verse 20, and the prodigal arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion. And he ran, embraced him, kissed him. The father saw the prodigal from a distance away. How far away are you? How far have you been from me? You feel far. You feel distant. You feel stuck in a corner, in a closet, alone, in a dark, cold room. You feel like you have abandoned God. You feel unworthy and ashamed, but from a distance, the Father of love, of life and forgiveness, He has seen you. He sees you. He spots you. And he leaves everything behind and runs after you. The Bible says he had compassion and he ran and embraced him and kissed him. God is running after you. God is running after your children. God, our Heavenly Father, has compassion and is embracing. He's wanting to embrace you. He's wanting to bring you near. The father kisses the prodigal son. And as the son repents and desires to make things right with his father, the father, in verse 22, says to his servants, quickly bring the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand. Put shoes on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. Shara For this son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Man of God, 
woman of God. Let the Father embrace you. Let God, your heavenly Father, let him kiss you. Let him make love to you. Let him shower you with love and embrace you with affirmation. Sin and shame cannot dwell here. Sorrow and guilt and condemnation cannot dwell here. I care not what you've done. I care not what you've done in the past. I care not about what you've done, but I run after you. I forgive you. I've been waiting for you. I want you. I've been waiting for you for a time and a time and a half. What took you so long? Quick, bring the best robe. Put it on him. Bring the ring and put it on his head and shoes on his feet. This stands for recognition. This stands for restoration. This stands for a covering. The Father covers you. You do not need to feel vulnerable. He covers your shame, your nakedness, your poverty. He covers your wounds. He covers you. Put a ring on his hand. Stand for authority. Shoes on his feet. Stand for safety. Bring the fat and cap and kill it. Let us sell it. For this son was dead. Is alive. Is lost and is found. The prodigal are returned. The unloved, the unwanted, the rejected, the poor, the confused. Those who have practiced witchcraft and sorcery. They are returning to God our Father. But the Bible here says, Verse 17, when the prodigal came to himself, there is an awakening taking place. Other translations said, when he came to his senses, we must pray that these prodigals come to their senses, that they become awakened by the spirit of light, of revelation, that the fear of God would quicken their spirits so that they may be awakened and come to themselves. God, I pray, let the spirit of truth come upon this generation. Let the prodigal, let the wasting ones, the reckless ones, the ones that have been squandering, the ones that have been reckless. God, I pray, may they return home. And God says, There will be throngs and throngs and multitudes and multitudes and waves and waves of young people coming back to the Father. Tears in their eyes, bawling on their face, running and returning, crying out for salvation. It is not too late for you. It is not too late for your children. It is not too late for your family. It is not too late for this nation. The prodigals are returning. They are returning back to the Father wholeheartedly. And nothing will stop it. No shame, guilt, condemnation, and sin. Fire! Do away with the sin and the sting of death. Break him free from all slavery and bondage. The Father is calling the prodigals back home. The Father is waiting for you. The Father is waiting for your children. What are you waiting for? Come back. What are you waiting for? Come here. What is once lost is now found. My son, my children, that was once dead, is now alive. Let us celebrate. Let us preach the gospel. Let us feast with God our Father. It's time for the harvest. Let the prodigals return.